Hi, everyone. I'm Miguel Antonio Guevara. I'm a PhD student in Spanish in the Department of Romance Languages. My presentation is a work based on rela relations, connection between poesia, poetry, and teaching Spanish, specifically um, teaching Spanish in SHL environments. I call to this work Poiesis and Teaching Spanish. Poiesis from the Greek root. Poiesis is creation, no? Because my work is about the process of creation and its relations with the learning process of languages. So, my work is called Poiesis and Teaching Spanish, Comparative Analysis of Two Didactic Approaches to Teaching Spanish Through Poetry with a Proposal for Teaching Spanish Heritage Learners. Um, the outline of my work, okay, um, some of the topics that are, I'm gonna be Discussing here is Poetry in the Classroom, a didactic proposal by Gallardo Álvarez. Creative Writing and Poetry in Language Teaching de Pérez Valverde, from Pérez Valverde. Um, one of my works about it, about the poetry in the heritage classroom, specifically a paper about the critical, the Chicano critic, of the institutionalization of Spanish in the United States. Um, immediately, I'm going to do a kind of conceptual clarification, specifically language teaching, heritage learners, cognitive, cognitive and effective phenomena, meaning construction and negotiation, that it is a kind of categories or concepts that I find, I find it in this work by Pérez Valverde and Gallardo Álvarez. Then I um, try to relate the propos proposition of Pérez Valverde and Gallardo Álvarez with a kind of methodological reading methods, specifically from the discourse, critical discourse analysis from Michel Foucault and Van Dijk. Then I try to show my critical proposal and some examples specifically one example in the classroom with which an exercise that I call el reloj or glossario de metaphors, the clock and the glossary of metaphors. The name is a kind of translation in English, no? So uh, then I'm trying to show my conclusions about the ideas, about the categories, about the process that I've been um, trying to build you know, about the creation, poetry, and its relations with the Spanish learning process in Heritage Classroom. Uh, a kind of intro first. Um, well, like, like I told you, this article or this essay uh, compares two didactic approaches to teaching Spanish through poetry and propose teaching heritage Spanish through poetry, no? This is the same categories that I told you in the outline. First, I want to share this quote from Gallardo Álvarez. And she tried to build a dialogue with Barrientos. Um, but the thing that I want to focus in this idea about the poetic communication is inherently imaginary, no? And another idea about the effects, no? For example, she said that poetic activity affects our ability to relate to others, to the world and to ourselves, in addition to stimulating our imagination, our intelligence and our language capacity, no? So in that sense, I try to relate my understanding about the, the um, the meaning of use sociocultural approaches in the SHL environment class. No, um, for me, it's very important to use poetry 
and relate with this Gallardo Alvarez quote in the sense that I understand that the best place to use sociolinguistic approaches is in, in process of creation. No, in that sense, in that sense, and in this um, example, the process of creating poetry, you know, because it's an imagination process, it's a creative process, and try to stimulate stimulate in the imagination of the students. You no, know? is um, it's a very cognitive process in that sense. You no, know? it's a kind of um, integral, a kind of um, holistic process. You no. Know? Um, so in that sense, I try to stimulate um, through creativity, through creation, and other kinds of process like intelligence or language capacity uh, learning process. You know? um, in another words about Perez Valverde uh, proposed, no, is um. It's more focused in the creative writing process. No, it's not um, just theoretical, like in in the first one other. No, in that sense, Perez Valverde is more practical. In that sense, it's more inductive. For example, um, my interest in her work specifically is this thing about uh, how the creative writing writing process in classroom. No. Um, promotes promotes the development of writing skills, and in the same time that encourage aesthetic appreciation and artistic sensitivity. You no, know? so in that sense, I understand that not only a kind of writing process. You no, know? it's not just a kind of practice of a uh, one skills that we know like writing process. You no, know? or um, the oral process to reading the things that the student have been writing no is overall a kind of process that they can understand the appreciation and artistic um aesthetic sensibility you know in the process that they try to use their imagination to write in new things they they not only use the language you know they use another as aspect of their cognition you know, that the aesthetic one you know. so in that sense um the forms that students incorporate to them or um have this process of assimilation knowledge is not just a kind of repetition process it's just in a, a, an imagination and creative process so that in that sense, the way that they can fix the ideas, in the way that they can fix the process is more inductive in that process. So for me, it's, it's, for, it's most meaningful in that sense, because I think that in the creative process is a kind of way that is not just like they are learning something. No, it's not such a thing about learning things. It's more a process that they can live, you know? They can live things, you no? Know? They can live a meaningful process, images. So for me, uh, learning and create and creative process is a kind of the same thing, you no? Know? It's a kind of complex situation, no? It's a separate processes, you no? Know? It's a kind of maybe a phenomenological synthesis, you no? Know? The process of create things and in the same time, uh, an assimilation of a more complex process that we can call learning, for example. Okay, um, the next one is uh, some ideas that I have been writing in an essay called Critical Poetics, Chicano Criticism, Criticism of the Institutionalization of Spanish Through Poetry, no? In that sense, I understand language like a creative practice, no? And, and and also a necessary battlefield for the fight against cultural homogenization and the era sort of an identity and heritage. You know? Usually the hegemonic language tends to erase cultures. You no, know? so in that sense, I try to use 
not just the Spanish, like a, a tool or a skill but for professional processes or the professional life of the students is is more um a, a thing about identity, you know, a thing about the roots of the students in the heritage HL classroom, no. So in that sense, I understand that they can use um the process the process that they use in to improve their Spanish, no, in this heritage classroom, but nor a way to be a skill, like I told, no, it's more a way to uh, understand better their identity and their roots, no, and using this practice like a kind of uh, social social justice process, no, in the same moment, like like they um, learn or learn thing or create entering this process to creating things, they can um, uh, recognize this identity process no? uh, and, and feel more um, proud about their roots. No? So it's a kind of process of healing their identity. No? Uh, my methodology is uh, from the critical discourse analysis. Um, from Van Dijk and Foucault, specifically in the sense of Foucault, is these things that he called devices, no? dispositivo. For me, there's poems in that case, in this process of, to create poems is a kind of process that they can create devices, no? device to use it in this battlefield that is language, no? trying to articulate idea, trying to articulate this creative process of uh, writing poetry, you know, about their roots, about their identity, about their community, you know. In that sense for Foucault, linguistically and non-linguistically uh, materialization of this course, in, that, in this case the language, you know, we can call um, devices, you know, from, for example, a device not, not is just um, for example, a, a, a book, you know, this materiality example, no, a device is to uh, language to, you know, the forms or the ways that we use, the style that we use language, you no, know? in that sense, uh, like Foucault says, you no, know, uh, these devices are connected with knowledge, you know, um, and this knowledge have a kind of thread, a kind of constellation with a lot of powers relations. Um, so in that sense, I understand that uh, the human consciousness, like like Foucault says, you no, know, is discursive. You no, know? it's a construction of narratives. It's a construction of knowledge. Knowledge, you know. It's a construction of knowledge by knowledge in the same time, you no? Know? So I understand that I can give to my students uh, the tools to build devices, you no? Know, in that sense uh, that I call the poems devices, you no? Know? Um, additionally, you no, know, um, I use this Van Dijk approach because for Van Dijk is a kind of triangle, you no? Know, the the bill of these courses, no, it's just, it's not just a things that came from the subject. In 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 that case, no, for him, um, language is a thing about social interaction. It's a kind of triangle, like I told, no, it's a triangle like I can build between the society, the discourses, and the subjects, no. So in that sense, the social interaction and social structures build meanings, no, build. Uh, discourses. So in that sense, these devices that I call in relation with Foucault terminology, you no, know, it's a kind of synthesis, you no, know, a kind of social and subject uh, synthesis, you no. Know? So in that sense, devices or discourses is not just a production by subjects, it's a production by society, you no. Know? Okay, uh, some of the critical propose that I like I find uh, through this kind of relations of concepts and um, concepts like practice concepts or uh, just theoretical uh, uh, 
um, concepts or these methods of discourse analysis, uh, some that are things that I can find uh, that the students can give with these practices, with um, environmental design, with these approaches, is uh, find and develop communication skills. No, in the process that they can write things from their imagination. No, uh, obviously the improved understanding of the language. No, uh, in poetry um, happens different things that in the um, the usual conversations. For example, no, uh, is you, you you use metaphors, you use images, you use a different aesthetics comprehension. So in that sense, it's a different ways to understanding the phenomenon of language. No, they can expand their vocabulary. Obviously, no, develop creativity. Is another obvious, but it's important to show it. No, uh, promote aesthetic appreciation. That I've been told. Uh, it, um, and no, not less important, but maybe it's a kind of a whole a whole for me. This thing about the develop critical thinking, you no, know, uh, through use their imagination, their ideas, like this device called poem or poema or verses or verso. No, they can uh, build this their own uh, agency you know, to translate their ideas. Um, their roots, like I told, they, their ideas about community, about identity, and so on and so on. No? Um, and no more or less uh, important, but important to this learn to interpret text. No? They can learn to interpret new texts. If they need to write a poem, they need to read poems too. No? For that sense, in the classroom of ASHL that I use, this creative process I used to um, point from another of um, writers now. Uh, some examples, I have the lesson plan three, for example, now that I use um, a class called Poesia Identidad y Justicia Social, now Poetry, Identity and Social Justice. So in that sense, uh, I try to have my uh, to put in practice these ideas, no? But um, I have uh, an example for, an example very specific about the things that I've been talking, no? For example, this exercise that I call El Reloj y el Glosario de Metáforas, or the Clock and the Glossary of Metaphors, no? And what is about this exercise? Well, I try to, from a very, um, very easy process to just put words, no? Just put 12 words uh, in each hour, no? Uh, this helps to, the, you know, like in a um, mental map, no? To use more easy, uh, the way to put words, no? In that sense, so it's just 12 words in, words in the first, uh, view, you know, for example, mama, mom, hermano, brother, patio, patio, no, yard, o sala, no, uh, living room, or abrazo, who, you no, that is just to put 12 words. And then I try to build with these words uh, this glossary of metaphors. What is a glossary of metaphors? It's just try to put, to change one word by words, no, for example. If, if I have um, mama, no? mom, so change mom by a description of mom. No? This is a metaphor, basically, you know? like mama, un abrazo con olor a limpio, no? a hug with a clean smell. No? Um, so in that sense, I change mama, just one word, by one verse or one sentence. In that case, Un abrazo con olor limpio, no? A hog with clean smell, no? Then hermano, no? Un idiota con el que peleo pero amo, no? An idiot with, with I fight, but I love, but I love him, no? So, and in that sense, um, we try to, uh, to make the same situation, but with the 12 words, no? Uh, like sala, no? Jugar y comer para ser feliz. Uh, this is, is an example that I 
uh, find with a student in a, a class, no? For example, uh, the, the last part of the exercise is just erase the first words, no? Like mama, hermano, patio, sala, out these words and just have the the verses, no? In that, in the, in that case, the glossary of metaphors, no? So we haven't mama, hermano, patio, we just have the verses, no? This is the, a poem called Casa in Spanish. Un abrazo con olor a limpio, un idiota con el que peleo pero amo, el templo de las plantas de mi abuela, jugar y comer para ser feliz, el remedio que nos cura del mundo, ¿no? So, in English, ¿no? A hug with a clean smell, an idiot that I fight with but I love, my grandmother's temp of plants, play a need to be happy, the remedy that heals us from the world, ¿no? So we have a poem, no? Uh, just uh, part with simple words and in a process to exchange words by sentences, no? We can build meaning with students in the classroom. And they have their device, they have, they have the imagination device to to use language, to use the Spanish um, uh, tools, no? So uh, some conclusion of these words. First is poetry is available tool for teaching Spanish. <laughs> um, both, no, in the sense that uh, foreign language, but it's an inheritance language too, no? Because through poetry, they can, students develop their communicative, intercultural, and literary skill, no? It's a thing that I had been talking about it, no? Uh, it could also promote aesthetic appreciation and artistic sensitivity, sensitivity no? Uh, the second one is both approaches have their own strengths and weakness. In the, in the case of the theoretical framework that I use it, maybe one of, of it is... Um, so theoretical, but another one is practical. So I try to give more presence about the practical stuff in the classroom, you know, in that sense. Uh, another one is the choice of didactic approach should depend on the specific needs of the learners, on the learners and the context in which the teaching is taking place. You no, know? what is about it? Well, maybe with a differentiation learning practices, you no know, practices about that with each student, it's a different poem, no? It's a differentiation process of learning too, in that sense, no? Because individually they have their own experience about the community, about their identity, about their roots and so on and so on. No? And the final one is that poetry can be a powerful tool for promoting cultural understanding and fighting against cultural homogenization, no? Because with um, the use of poetry, um, expose the students to different culture, to different experience of their their own culture, actually, and they can develop you no know, better the understanding of the world. You no, know? well, this is uh, my all work. I hope that you enjoy my process, uh, because I enjoy a lot this process of. Uh, learn to teaching languages. Well, thank you.